Good afternoon, I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. We begin with news that medical officials at the University Hospital of the West Indies are treating a suspected case of the coronavirus. The hospital's accident and emergency department has been treating the suspected case all morning. Now, we have also learned that the A&E department is on partial shutdown. The patient is female and is in quarantine. And the microbiology unit at the university hospital is also locked up. Now, regarding the patient, TVJ News understands that the patient went to China to visit a relative and recently returned to Jamaica. The patient flew into Jamaica via the Norman Manley International Airport. We do not know when the patient arrived, and the Health Minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, will be having an emergency press conference at 12.30. So once again, just letting you know that medical officials at the University Hospital of the West Indies are treating a suspected case of the coronavirus. And we expect much more from the minister when he holds his press conference in a few minutes. Meanwhile, Dr. Christopher Tufton, in an interview on Primetime News last night, said the ministry had all in place to treat with cases of the coronavirus. He was speaking with TVJ's Janella Precious. The truth is that I have full confidence in our health staff, nurses included, who are there. Um, we have sufficient infrastructure, and that is why we have been able to prevent viruses or new diseases like the, 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 this, this particular one from entering our shores. Now, there's always a margin of error, and one could always argue for more facilities, but let's take the issue of an isolation area. The truth is that our, our, our health officials at the ports, if the need arises, have access to areas that can isolate an individual who is is suspected of having a particular ailment or, a pati or represents a particular risk. Beyond that, there is logistic support to move persons from the port to a, a medical facility where we have those in place. But again, I say um, in situations like this, we have to be careful that we do not create an impression that we are laid bare and exposed because we would be doing ourselves a disservice. Our nurses have worked very hard and yes, they do come under stress, and as a government, we want to work with them, which is why we have done a number of things to support. I, I think it's important for the Jamaican people to understand that we all have a role to play, which is why public education is key, but the government is taking this issue very seriously. That was Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton speaking last night on Primetime News, talking about Jamaica's readiness for the coronavirus. Now, for those of you just joining us, we told you a few minutes ago that the University Hospital of the West Indies are treating a sus is treating a suspected case of the coronavirus. And we told you that the patient is female. More details are coming in as we speak. We have subsequently learned that the female patient is a businesswoman who returned to the island on January 12th, and she just started showing symptoms of the virus. And of course, we'll keep you updated during the day, and we'll have much more details in primetime news at 7. In other news, farmers in Central Village St. Catherine are calling for the National Water Commission to provide compensation after their farm was covered by water from a broken NWC main. They told TVJ News that the water has been flowing through their farm for over three weeks now, despite several reports to the commission. TVJ's Kalisha Williams has that story. It has not rained in Central Village St. Catherine for days, yet this vegetable farm is covered by floodwaters. The source looks like an underground spring, but is actually a broken NWC pipeline nearby. These rotten vegetables told the tale. And the farmers are irate. All of my earnings gone down the chain. Much amount of pumpkin, much tomato, pop chow, pepper, everything. So right now, see me have a gungu walk on that side there. That side they're dead. As you can see, the camera take it. Water boots come in handy as a farmer traverse through the murky water. And instead of celebrating their first harvest for the new year, the farmers have to be counting their losses. To make matters worse, they will not be able to replant anytime soon, even if the water dries up. And basically, 
It's like we can't do nothing because we have the punk in them, so it would have achieved a little thing in our new area. And as you can see, the whole of them spoil out. And we don't have no other source. This is a piece of common here, where you see. And where we basically plant pop chow, catch crop, and through the water, we can't do nothing. You can't see it for yourself. We were told the water has been flowing through the farm for three weeks now, despite reports to the National Water Commission. I said to the man, them were come here, come fix it. Three weeks now, so I beg you now. Fix the water and make it come off of the farm. Make we can do with things. I don't get no answer from no one. And this morning, me decided to take it up in hand and go to TVJ. No, I got a water commissioner, then say, me show the man, him say, go to TVJ for this need for go on it. We are asked for some help to bring her back on her foot car. We don't have nothing left here now. When we contacted the commission's public relations department, we were told they have no reports of the incident. However, a representative told us a team will be deployed to the area to carry out further investigations. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. The police say they will not relent in the fight against crime. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson was addressing lay magistrates in Montego Bay recently. As you are probably aware, we have whole or parts, large parts of gangs in custody awaiting trial at the moment. The largest being 50 members of one gang and the two gang leaders are in custody awaiting trial. We're waiting on the, the, um, the verdict from the first gang case, 19, 19 members are there still awaiting um, the verdict. We should get that next uh, in March. And that gang is the U Chen's Wilson gang. Chief Justice Brian Sykes is expected to rule on the case in March. Prosecutors say members of the U Chen's Wilson gang were involved in murders, rapes, and armed robberies between 2015 and 2017. The gang allegedly stole licensed firearms, cars, and other items valued at more than $400 million. In the meantime, Major General Anderson says there are a number of other gangs that will be brought before the courts. We have another, one, another gang case that just started last week for another collective, and I have 12 lined up to come. When you start to do that, that's what's going to give you the long-term change. That's what's going to make the difference with that organized crime, highly violent gang culture that exists. Meanwhile, the police commissioner is insisting that states of emergency are not the only response to crime. With the addition of the Eastern Kingston Police Division on Sunday, eight SOEs are now in operation across the country. But for the police commissioner, SOEs help to halt shootings and murders. Major General Anthony Anderson pointed to major technological advancements in the police force. This, he says, will help with how cases are tracked by the police. In addition, more technology will be used to help with how resources are allocated. We're just doing the evaluation on station record management system, which is, if in effect, the e-diary. And that's in a, in a view to, at some point, in the not distant future, we'll get rid of the paper records and go to an electronic system that links us as soon as something's entered in St. James, we know in Portland, we know in Kingston, and we know in Port Morant that something has happened. This is going to significantly impact the, the ability of people to avoid the law. As of this month, we've started to track our vehicles. It's within another month, we'll have about 1,200 of them tracked. So we'll know how fast they're going, how they're being driven, where they are, where our people are, what they're doing. And when you have a traffic accident, it will generate a report in six seconds. And it's time for a break, but stay with us. We have more stories right after these messages.
Welcome back and we're continuing the news. There are more reactions to news that members of the Caribbean Maritime University CMU Council who recently resigned had signed non-disclosure agreements. Attorney at law Bert Samuels has strongly criticized the concept of the agreement. The Gleaner reported on the weekend that the agreements bar council members from speaking publicly about information obtained during their tenure. It's valid for five years from the date it was signed. The Prime Minister has promised to look into the issue and raised it at Cabinet. According to Mr. Samuels, several questions immediately arise when these agreements come into play because it appears there's something to hide. It puts a lot of pressure on the individuals who are signing these agreements because no doubt it was a condition of their service. And it is obvious that the whistleblower that is required to, to help us at times would become, uh, you know, trapped by this agreement. Mr. Samuels outlined another negative implication of non-disclosure agreements. Non-disclosure agreements do not meet with persons who really want to serve and who believe that they should not be involved in secrecy. So it, it pushes away people who want to do that. And it, it sends a, a bad, bad, bad signal for those who are serving as though we could point to them and say, OK, you're part of the cover-up. Who wants to be part of a cover-up, especially at the CMU? It's now looking, you know, in retrospect, so bad. The government is being called on to put measures in place to deal with the poor road conditions, especially in northern Trelawney. TVJ's Prince Moore reports. The call comes from MP for northern Trelawney, Victor Wright, following the withdrawal of taxi services yesterday by some operators who ply the route from Falmouth to Hammersmith in Trelawney. Mr. Wright says he has made attempts to get funding for the project. I have on the table of parliament right now questions to the Prime Minister, asking him about to answer about this road. I need to know how much money has been spent in this constituency because when you look what is happening around North Trelawney, you have roads fixing from Jackson Town up to Stewart Town. You have South Trelawney that was there before I came. But in all the other constituencies, you have at least some semblance of road repairs that is happening. None is happening in North Trelawney. And as a member of parliament, get it in your head, I have gotten not even one cent as a member of parliament. The taxi operators say for years they have been calling on the government to address the road conditions as it's costing them thousands of dollars to repair their vehicles which are damaged repeatedly by the poor state of the roads. We have many craters all, all along the road and we have been having this situation for a very long time now. So we decide that we need some very good attention from those who are in the target. In the meantime, Councillor for the Martha Bray Division, Philip Service, says for years there have been efforts to fix some sections of the roads. He says this is done through patching, but that's not enough at this time. Despite the fact that there have been funds allocated occasionally for the, uh, for the occasional patching, the condition of the road is so bad that the, the taxmen here have been calling for one of the major things that they are calling for is no more patching on the road. As we speak, some patching is even going on, and that is what I think has escalated this situation this morning. Now, this appeal to the government. Last week we were in Parliament and there was a supplementary estimate tabled for $1.4 billion, and we heard that that money is to go towards road repairs. I am not one of the lucky mem MPs in Parliament to have been receiving any of this allocation for my constituency. I am saying that allocate some money for the roads, especially this particular road in Northern Trelawney, and let the contractors bid so we can have proper repairs being executed for the roads. It's a disgrace. Mr. Wright is also calling for the government to dialogue with MPs when roads are to be fixed in a constituency. So while I agree that tourism is important and that the road to Good Hope needs to be repaired, if you are going to, in one instance, and, and, and this argument is out there that the money comes from tourism fund, all the money belongs to the taxpayer. Every money in the country belongs to the taxpayer. And somebody is responsible for allocating that money. If you can allocate money to fix a tourism road that 2% of the constituency uses, then you can allocate money to fix a major road that the other 98% uses. Prince Moore, TVJ News. 
more students at the University of the West Indies Mona are to benefit from increased scholarships. Scotiabank is the lead sponsor of the UWI Toronto Benefit Gala Scholarship Program. Senior Vice President with Responsibility for International Banking, Brendan King, explained that the 10-year partnership with the program has raised over 1.5 million Canadian dollars for over 500 beneficiaries. At the recent awards ceremony, Mr. King revealed that Scotiabank has extended the partnership for an additional five years. We'll be increasing our total sponsorship investment to 75,000 Canadian dollars per year. And most importantly, our sponsorship, our sponsorship will include 15 new Scotiabank scholarships per year designated to support worthy students in need. Among the recipients this year are Jody Moore, a final year actuarial science student, and Tajay Henry, who is studying linguistics and language education. Who are willing to give, uh, that's, uh, that's just breathtaking to me, like they're willing to give without any other expectation, only that of your success. Like that just means so much to me. I experienced quite a few financial struggles in my first year of university. And this life-changing award has acted as a lifeline that has allowed me to continue to pursue my studies here. All right, and uh, just to remind you that the medical official officials at the University Hospital of the West Indies are treating a suspected case of the coronavirus. The a and department of the hospital is on lockdown and they have been treating the suspected case all morning. It's on partial shutdown. It's a female patient and they are in quarantine. The patient recently visited a relative in China. And we'll have much more. We'll continue to track this story and give you more details uh, as it unfolds. The Minister, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tupton, will be having a press conference scheduled for about 12.30. So we'll try to bring you all the details as far as possible. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, Good afternoon.